Charles Darwin, the granddaddy of evolution, once coined the phrase survival of the fittest to mean the natural process resulting in the evolution of organisms best adapted to the environment. It should be noted that Darwin also said that a wife was an object to be beloved and played with better than a dog, anyhow. Uh, and then he married his cousin, so, you know, he wasn't the most revolutionary thinker in all regards, but we're just going to consider his work in evolution. Which, by the way, is kind of funny that he studied evolution but still married his cousin, considering he should understand uh, the risks of inbreeding, but whatever. Anyways, uh, I am an evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology student, so when I say fitness, I don't mean your daily stretch routine or your maxing out the bench press or doing appropriate amounts of cardio, whatever that is. I'm pretty sure that's a quantum riddle that can never be solved. But when I say fitness, I refer to Darwin's term of evolutionary success. Basically, the more fit you are, the more likely you are to survive and reproduce and pass your genes off to offspring who can inherit the traits that allowed you to be fit in the first place. Every species that exists today is here because they come from a lineage that has been fit to survive and reproduce since the conception of life. So every person you walk by on the street, every bird you see flying overhead, and any bug that somehow teleported into your room and is terrorizing your personal space, these all have a direct connection to the origin of life. Meanwhile, there are billions of other lineages that died for good because they weren't fit enough. Nature is harsh. If you're not fit, you're not it. And 99% of species that ever existed were not it, apparently. So this is what natural selection essentially boils down to. Survival of the fittest. But I actually want to challenge that phrase and some of the misconceptions that it can imply. For one, it's not really about survival, it's only really about reproduction. It doesn't matter how well you can survive, if you can't reproduce, then evolutionarily you are not propagating your own existence through creating offspring, and therefore you are uh, unsuccessful from a fitness standpoint. Survival is basically existing long enough to get to reproduce. Because, like, if you die, you don't really get to have sex. Of course, just because you're alive doesn't mean you're having sex either. Join the club. But this principle of reproduction over survival is kind of why it's okay that female praying mantises eat the male after sex. Because... As long as reproduction occurs, the animal was evolutionarily successful. In fact, it may actually be because they offer themselves up for consumption that they are seen as a more favorable mate. So, giving themselves up to be eaten was actually what had them chosen in the first place? A great case of reproduction being prioritized over survival. Now, I do just want to say that just because you don't reproduce, it doesn't mean you weren't evolutionarily successful. It's a lot more complicated than that, especially as a social species, like a human. But I don't know, like, I'll maybe I'll talk about that in another video. My second issue with the phrase, survival of the fittest, is that you don't actually have to be the fittest. You just have to be fit enough. Uh, you don't have to be the strongest predator. If you're the second strongest, it doesn't mean you'll die because there's one stronger than you. You'll Chances are you'll probably still find prey that you can eat and eventually you'll be able to reproduce and blah blah. Fitness is also just a really complicated thing. Sometimes it's unclear what the best strategy is. So for example, with birds that have mating calls to try and attract mates, uh, some birds actually take advantage of another bird's nicer mating call and pretend that it was them so that they can mate with the female that the song originally attracted. It's called being a satellite male. Uh, this is seen in bugs and fish too. Basically, uh, you don't have to be the fittest, you just have to be good enough that you are successful. That's why animals aren't perfect, it's because they don't have to be. Natural selection is strong and over billions of years has created some crazy optimization strategies, but it's not strong enough to create perfection. There's a reason why we can't fly or shoot lasers out of our eyes, or why every 30 minutes on some days I just have to pee even though I haven't drinking any water. Evolution does not create perfection because life hasn't needed to be perfect to survive. It's not about being the fittest, it's about being good enough. Now I will admit, um, reproduction of the good enough doesn't really have the right ring to it. But I'm making these clarifications for a reason. 
As humans, we've kind of broken the rules of evolution. Not because we're immune to them, but because we know how to exploit them. If we aren't fit in terms of our environment, we can literally pick ourselves up and just move to another environment where we are the fittest. We can create new environments in which we flourish best. At least, we can try. Most animals either don't realize that that's a thing that they can do, or they just don't have the available resources to actually do something like that. A new environment in a modern human setting can mean a whole bunch of things. It can mean a new job, a a new home, a new group of friends, a new country, anything really. There is no such thing as a better existence than another. Some of us are just better in some environments or certain situations than others, and others are better in their own. Darwin actually showed us this a long time ago with finches. Uh, you see that small beaks are better for digging at insects in tight places, while big beaks are better for breaking open hard nuts and seeds. Both of these have their own strengths, but they also are weak in each other's fields. Some animals uh, seem pretty suboptimal or even useless, but just realize it's not because they're unfit, they might just be in the wrong environment or they were caught in the wrong situation. Remember, it was better for the dinosaurs to be like this than like this. So the next time you feel like you're especially struggling, have a look at your environment. Is this really you that is failing? Is it you that cannot flourish? Is it you that isn't good enough? Or is it just that you belong somewhere else? Maybe you should be doing something else. Maybe you should be with other people. Maybe this isn't your fault at all. You are the product of four billion years of human evolution. You are a direct connection to the beginning of life. Just like every other living thing, every mushroom, every corgi, every person that you think is better than you, you as a life form are just as valid as the rest of them and that means you are good enough. Just by being here, it means that you are good enough. Because all of your ancestors up to this point for the last four billion years have been good enough. And so too can you be. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the smartest, the strongest, the sexiest. You don't even have to be the fittest. It's just about being fit enough, and there's something beautiful about that. Because it means that by being enough, evolution says that you are perfect. And I believe it too. I believe that you can be perfect, and that you can be good enough. Um, I haven't really thought how to end this video, so hopefully this outro was good enough too. Uh, okay. <laughs>